Hey folks, it's Rivgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator here in Boulder Canyon. I'm just running down over here because I want to show you. Actually, I'm going to jump up onto the stone here. I'm going to climb all the way up here. Half of our field is ready to harvest. The other half is not yet because it grew at a funny kind of rate, that one did. So we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that one to come, right, uh, come ready. Uh, the grass in here is saying ready to harvest. I haven't actually checked it on here. So if we go into there and we go to growth, the grass is on its second stage. So that one's ready to harvest as well. So we could abandon the whole plowing fiasco and just go and start harvesting grass. We could, but I'm not going to. I have absolutely no desire to go and do that. I want to do this field. This is what we started doing at the end of our last episode, and this is what I'm going to carry on doing today. Now, I'm going to get down near that rock, and the thing that we want to do next is... Right, I'm going to lower that one down there. I don't want to be too far back. Right, that is actually fine. Okay. We will run down here. I want to get close to the rock, and then I want to do a circle around the outside of it. Now, we've already lost some of the grass that was growing around the edge of it over on that side. Unfortunately, we didn't really have any choice in the matter. Um, but I'm not going to go very close to it. I'm going to stay away from it. I think that's going to be a lot better for all of the jobs that we're going to want to do. So I'm going to sort of stay out here, like this. There, even that is, I think, getting a little bit close, but we'll we'll stick with that. There, like that. And yes, I know I'm turning a sharp corner while I'm going around here with the plowing ground, which is not best practice at all, but I'm still going to do it. So then we can come around like that, and keeping away from the stone... Like this. There we go. And then I will go in a line over here. Like that. There. That is the outside edge going around the stone. So it's quite a ways out from what it was previously. But I think that is absolutely fine. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy to do that. And I'm just going to bring that one up to there. Like that, and I'm going to start a second line just there, close-ish to it. Then we just want to run down the side of the field. That's uh, down the yeah down down the side of the existing field. That's not going to be any kind of issue. And we want, and then we've got to mark out the field along the bottom. And that's the, the marking out of the field along the bottom boundary. That's the one that um, I'm not quite sure how I want the bottom edge of the field to be yet. We'll have to see. And I know I'm plowing up a little bit of the grass over on that side. It's only a very small amount. Quite frankly, I don't think it matters. I've got no intention of going and um, mowing all of that before we start anything because I'd have to go and do all of it manually. And yes, it might be a hardcore series, but that is just a tiny, tiny smidgen too hardcore for my tastes. I don't think we'll do that. I think we will leave it as it is. Now, this bit down here... Hmm. I was kind of thinking to do it similar to what I've already done. So I want to just come down... And actually, I'm not going to come down any further than that. I'm going to leave it like that. And then I will back out. And I'll come over to here like this. I'm not going to use a straight edge. I'm not going to use a GPS to mark out a straight edge on it at all. I'm going to go from there, like that. I'm just going to bring it down, like this. And I'm going to start running along. And then we're going to bring it up like this, and we're going to be away from that fence. I don't want to get too close to that fence. So we're going to bring it up like this. And I'm going to have... A good tractor's width between the fence and the edge of the field, like this. Because there is some rough spots near the edge, right against that fence. And so I don't think it's going to hurt to leave a little bit of a gap like that. All the way along it. I think that will be absolutely fine. I've got no issues with that. I think it's going to work out well. 
going slightly wider, just there. Again, that's fine. I'm, I, well, I might go back and just take that, nudge that down a little bit. Because I want this one here to come down here like this. Right across the edge of that track, like that. Because that's where we've got the edge of our field. And then this bit here comes along the top of this little bit of bank. Not because, I, you know, I don't necessarily want the field right down to the edge down there. I just figure it would be better if we do it like that. There, right. That way, the, the edge of the field runs across the top of that little bit of bank there. But it doesn't go in any further. Now, I am going to go back over here and... Um, yeah, and also that allows us you know, a little bit of room to build an extra shed there if we want to, right on the edge of the field without causing us any problems. So I'm going to drop this down here like this, and I am going to go a little bit closer to the fence. I don't want to go too much closer because... just in case it causes any issues. I think that is plenty close enough. As pro to be honest, it's probably a little bit too close, but... We'll have to wait and see. We may have to do a little bit of, of tidying up work. Right, that's fine. All done. All dusted. So now what I can do is I can start doing the second and third round. We're going to do at least three times around the field. So I will drop that plow in right there. I'm not going to do anything um, too clever at the moment. I'm just literally just going to follow around the edge of the field. We're going to go right around the very edge of the field three times minimum and hopefully I won't make a pig's ear of the corners anywhere and then when we've done that with our three times minimum maybe four times I have to see what it looks like once we've done three times uh, then I will set up the GPS and we can start doing the stripes backwards and forwards across the field and that's the time-consuming bit. That's the bit that is going to take a while. And there's no two ways about this. This job is going to take a while. Uh, so much so that I am seriously considering getting the combine going down on the bottom field. Um, although we've got to wait for that crop to become ready. And we get that combine going and then we won't do the grass this time round. We'll just leave the grass over in that field so that I can keep going with the ploughing. I can do a bit of ploughing and then do the combining and make sure that the combine stays empty. Um, do a bit more ploughing. You get the idea. If we could do, if I could do something like that, it might just help alleviate a little bit of the tedium of this because this is quite a big field. And we're not going to get a bigger plough than this unless I go with a mod that allows us to cultivate and plow at the same time, and I go and get a bigger cultivator, then this is what we've got. This is what we're going to be using. And I don't really think that we should be getting a um, cultivator to go over and do it all. I mean, I did I do that? I think I did actually do that previously. I, I did actually use a cultivator on the first field, but it was a small cultivator. It was one that was... Um, like, it had the tines down on it. It was, like, a, a quite a strong one. So it was, uh, um... Oh, what's the name of the plough? It wasn't not... I'm thinking disc plough, but it's, it's nothing to do with disc ploughing. Um, a, um... I can't remember the name of it now. But anyway, it was it, it basically a shallow plough. Is it like, the, like you use in the States? A shallow plough that sort of pushes it out both sides... Um, kind of like a cross between a plough and a cultivator. So it's not actually a cultivator, uh, not actually a, a proper cultivator, and not actually a proper plough either. So, like, halfway in between the two. And that's the style that we used for ploughing the stuff up down there, wasn't it? Or some of it, at least. And then we went and bought this plough. Now, this plough is really good. So, we, c I mean, we could seriously consider getting a bigger cultivator... And using that to do our work. Um, the cultivator we've got at the moment. Which one is it? It's that one right there. That one is a 3 meter cultivator. The plough we've got is 5.3. That's never 5.3 meters. That's maybe 4 meters. But that's 
I, I reckon the number is wrong on that. That's that's no 5.3 meters, surely. Actually, there is a way I can find that out. There is a way I can find that out. We can set the... Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I can... S I Alt-C, I can turn that one on. And then control S, I look in here, and I auto width 12.4 feet. Uh, three feet, well, three and a third, 10 feet makes three meters. 10 feet is, yeah, three and a bit feet. 10 feet is three meters. So this isn't even four, this isn't four meters. It's like three and a half meters. So, yeah, th this this um, plow, the, the, the number that we've got written on it is, is definitely wrong. I'm just going to turn that one off. I don't want that one on yet. We will come back and we will use that one. We will be using the GPS to do our plowing up here because, quite frankly, if we don't use the GPS, we're going to be doing a lot of overlapping. I'm not good enough to be able to not use the GPS. Right, there is a tree stump right there. There is the first tree stump that we found that we need to mark out. As long as I remember where they are, I suppose. That's all i got to do. So just remember where they are, and then we should be fine. So we found one right there. Thought there was another one there, but there isn't. And that's all i got to do. As we go round, anywhere that we see a tree stump, I've just got to remember where it is, and then we can go back to it afterwards. And with my memory... I have absolutely no doubt that that is going to go swimmingly well. It's going to be absolutely perfect. This field is going to take such a long time to plow. It will be the last bit that we need to do, I think. I can't imagine that we're going to need to go and plow another field after this in order to make everything work properly. We'll just be able to do this field and keep earning money the way that we have been earning money. We've been earning money through various different tasks. And as long as we can just keep earning a little bit of money here and there, like with the wool and with the eggs and so on and so forth, we should be able to make enough money with our crops as well that uh, we don't need a load more trees. Although there are a few more trees that we're going to be cutting. Um, what is the price of wool at the moment? Let's go and have a look. Wool is 700 Wool is way down. Silage is way up. So if we were to actually cut the grass right now and turn it to silage, we would make another probably nearly $100,000 just from selling the silage bales that we get off of these fields, uh, off of that one strip field up there, um, which is not a small amount of money, actually. There's, there's, there's quite a reasonable amount of cash that we could get from that. I'd be quite happy to do that. Uh... The only, uh, and we, we've got this field here that we're going to be doing, and I will be hopefully doing this one the same way that we've been doing the other fields. So we end up like, we, you know, the same way that we, we put the mower on the front, the baler on the back, and we just let it run backwards and forwards all the way across. It's going to be slightly different with the great big stone in the middle, but there's only going to be small strips that it's not going to do. It's going to do the bulk of the field. So long as it does the bulk of the field, that's all that really matters. Um, and we'll deal with the stone afterwards. Um, and with all of that extra that it's going to be doing, we're going to end up with, yeah, I think three times around, and then we will start working on the um, land work. That'd be about right. With all of the extra that we'll be doing... One harvest and then going through and wrapping all the bales. Because that's going to be another thing, is the time that it's going to take to wrap all of the bales that we do. That is going to be another very time-consuming task. And so we're not going to want to do that too many times before we decide, well, actually, you know, we've had enough of doing this. But I reckon once. Plus, we've got our speeded-up wrapper anyway. So that one's going to help us out with the, with the situation. Um... We'll be able to make ourselves a nice little bit of cash doing that. One good harvest off of here. I reckon we could be close to $200,000 by one good harvest off of here. As long as we get the right money. As long as we are well above $300 per thousand litres on silage. I reckon we could be close to 200000 worth of silage coming off of this field. Now, we are also going to need a boatload of silage for the cows. 
We're going to need a huge amount of it in order to keep them happy and keep them going. Um, a lot of you did say that, yes, you would like to see the placeables, this one here in particular, the cow feed mixer. Um, I'm not sure if you said you want me to use that fermenting silo or if you want me to use a normal... Uh, uh, either... Put it in the comments section. With silage... Do you want to see me using that fermenting silo where we just carry grass and we put in and it starts fermenting it? Um, do you want me to use the traditional method of silo, the, the, just one of these we put down, we make silage with it doing that? Or do you want me to do the silage as silage bales? We're going to need at least one cut of grass off of this field as silage for the cows. So... Which way would you like to see me do that? We need to be able to fill up their TMR ration. That's what we're after. The, the hay and the grass don't really matter. If you've got TMR, they don't use the other two. So I would like to be able to fill up the TMR. How would you like to see me do it? Do you want to see me do it in bales, in the traditional clamp, or using that um, silage maker thing that uh, comes with the global mods? Uh, get into the comment section and let me know. Give me your thoughts, views, and opinions on what we might do with silage. Because we are going to need to do one fairly big silage harvest in order to be able to have everything there ready. We've got one tree stump right there. I know I'm reversing at the moment. It's fine. Um, another, so there's two tree stumps that we need to go and pick up. There's two that we need to come back and do. That won't take very long. It's a nice easy task for us to go and do. Grab three, uh, two tree stumps so far. There's the other one. I can see it right there. And I'm going to start doing the GPS work from this top end up here. I'm going to go all the way right up to there on that corner. Although I will set it up further away from this corner, I think. I won't go all the way up here to set the thing up to start with. Right. You round down to there and away we go again. I've got to cultivate this field as well, although the cultivation will be able to be done with just a hired help. We put hired help going in the field, they will cultivate it, and that's all we need to worry about. And then we've got to get it planted, and that's going to be a bit of a time-consuming process, but again, it can be done using the hired help. And we've got the Vardastad uh, seed drill now, so it's... A lot faster than using that little tiny Amazon one that we had to start with. Um, oh, by the way, I've been looking at some new... Well, actually, Smoodalini has been looking at some new maps over on the Discord for me. Um, and if you weren't aware that we have a Discord channel, there is a link to it in the description down below. Go and take a look. We are um, an ever-growing community. There is a multiplayer map on there with a, a multiplayer server on there that you're able to access it your list of mods and everything is all um accessed via the discord a load of links and everything on there um but no smoodalini has been um looking at a couple of different maps is that i gave my criteria of a whole load of small field maps um uh, well a map with a whole load of small fields and there are two of them. There's two that have been released fairly recently that have both got quite a lot of small fields. Um, I can't remember the name of either of them, to be honest. Uh, but we've been he's been having a look at them both. One of them has only got like a 3.5 rating on um, Mod Hub, which quite surprises me. I suspect it's because all the fields are thin, narrow strips. There's like 150-something fields on it. So it, it very much reminds me of the series I did in FS17, beginning with G. I can't remember the name of the actual farm now. Um, that's going to bug me. What's the name of that one I did? That's, okay, that's seriously bugging me now. I can't remember it. Uh, but anyway, you, you know the one, there was there was one that had like uh, over a hundred fields on it and it was a really, really cool map. I really like the map, I like the feel of it, all the small little fields everywhere. Well, we've got another one like that. That's one, but the, the fields are all in strips, very much Eastern European style. And 
I really like it. I like the look of it. I like the, the feel of it. I haven't actually been on the map myself yet. I've um, seen a whole load of screenshots and photos of it, and it looks really good. And then there's another one that has also got a whole load of small fields. It's got something like 60 different small fields on it, both of which are really, really good for what I want to do with the next hardcore series, with, with having a huge number of small fields all over the place. I think it's going to work out really well. So hopefully, that's, you know, one of those will actually prove to be perfectly suitable for what we want. And we will be able to carry on and use that. Uh, right, I want to go here, and then I want to go Alt-E there, like that. I want to start that going forwards, like that. And then I want to stop there and Alt E again, like that. And then I want to go Control S on the here. And I've already done the auto width. Now I am going to. If I should lower it down a little bit. I lower it down a little tiny bit, like that. Fraction of a foot. And I've got show lines and I've got snap terrain angle. That's, that's absolutely fine. That's what I want to keep it as. And then I will go like that. And we're done. Okay. We can start working on the short work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this short work here. And then we'll go over and we'll start doing some of the short work over on the next bit. Right. Drop you in there like that. And... Right, I'll, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to do one more run up there. Uh, so we've got that longer run. Slightly longer run there. And lower that one in. So this field does have a bit of a curve in the middle of it there, which shouldn't be too much of a problem when we're working it, although it might... Like, with the hired help, it might just result in an extra strip or two being left in places. But I don't think it's going to be any major hardships. I don't think it's going to cause us any problems. Now I can go over this side over here and come up there like that. Oops. There. I'll just lower that one down. Right. Once I've finished doing these strips here, like I said, we'll... Go over and we'll start the other bits. And then we can just start working up and down the field. And I don't know whether I'll uh, be working up and down the field just doing the two of them together like this. Uh, doing like two separate lines like this. Or if I will just um, run straight up and down right next to each other. It could go either way at this point. It's, it's kind of a bit of potluck really. It's faster turning on the headlands, but when you've got that much um, of a long run in between, like that time scale, that you, you, the time spent over on the headland doesn't really make a great deal of difference, does it? Not, not really, not in the grand scheme of things. Um, but anyway, these two new maps that we've been looking at, both of them I think are very good. I will get the names of them and I will let you... Um, have a say in which one you think would be the better one later on in this series. We don't need to worry about it just yet, because there may be some other maps that turn up yet that I think are equally suitable, so I may go for one of those instead. Um, obviously, things have changed a bit. Now that we know that there isn't an FS21 coming out this year at all, and they said this, I think, I'm pretty sure they said this financial year. Now, if they actually did say this financial year, that means they're not going to come out until April next year. I suspect it will be summer, or just after summer, next year. So, it'll basically be delayed by one year. So, it will still be called FS21, I think. Because it will still be in 2021. Um, that it will be released. But, I mean, maybe not. Maybe they will go F they'll call it FS22, and they, they will abandon their long-held code of... Um, Odd numbers being PC and even numbers being tablet. But I, I very much doubt that. I suspect that they will keep it the same as they have done all the way through. Um, but it does give me a lot more time for a number of extra series. And I've got some ideas for a couple of them. 
Uh, one of which is going to be this one, obviously, is, is our next hardcore series, which I'm talking about quite a bit. Uh, we will be doing that one. I've got the new time-lapse series that will be... Anybody that watches the time-lapse is obviously sensing that we're reaching the end point on the current map. And yes, we are. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, the Depending on the time scale, I don't know if the next map will be the final map or if I will go on further. Because I have had a number of people saying that they would like me to at least in one of the series build up. Like, I'm just building up to the bigger machinery on the time lapse series that I'm on. And now I'm moving away. And this is what I've done several times so far. And I'm getting feedback from some people who would like me to stay in one place longer and start using, you know, start going at much bigger scale. And so I'm seriously considering doing that on this next map because this next map that I'm going to do is much more suited to it. Um, the one that I'm on at the moment with the time lapse series, yes, I could go for bigger scale stuff, um, but I'd either have to completely rewrite sort of the conditions of the story that I put in at the beginning or I would have to go and do a whole load more of cutting down of trees neither of which I really want to do I'd like to uh, I don't think that the storyline that I sort of got going with that doesn't really fit changing everything around I'd like to kind of keep it as it is um, so that being said the next one, it would actually fit quite nicely to go and expand out and become a much bigger enterprise than what I start off with. It, that, that would fit the theme of it quite well, I think. Um, and I've got some plans as well, because I'm going to be able to do some things that I've not done before in a time lapse. And that's quite good, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the things that has been... Com I've, well, I've, I've only ever done it once. And I'd like to be able to expand and do some more of it. I'm not going to say any more. I'm not going to put any more spoilers in than that. Those of you who watch the series probably know what I'm sort of getting at a little bit. Um, but yeah, so there's that one. Then the Alps Panorama series. Now, I was considering doing what I did back in FS17, which was uh, going to a lot of different maps constantly. Um, and I am still considering that, but there is another thing that I would like to do. There is a Hagenstedt map. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Hagenstedt was the um, original map that came with FS13. Way, way back. Farming Simulator 13 had the map um, Hagenstedt. You couldn't remove trees or anything like that on the Hagenstedt map. You had, you know, trees, everything. It was all exactly as it was, and, and there was no changes. There was no alterations. You, you had what you had. Um, I really liked that map, and I spent a lot of hours playing that game. I started... I didn't start doing YouTube videos on Farming Simulator until FS15, so I spent a lot of time playing FS13. Um, never, ever recorded a single episode on it. I didn't record any of it at all. Um, I did start recording stuff on Bjornholm in FS15 after I'd, I'd already put in quite a few hours playing that map myself anyway. Um, and then I started doing some recording on it. Um, but the FS13 stuff, I never did. But I had a way that I played that map and I used to love it. I played the entire map. I, I, I started off small and I just built myself up all the way through until I had bought out the entire map, the whole thing. And so I'm going, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do a series playing that map the way that I played it back in FS13. And yes, I may make use of some of the terrain alteration tools to remove a few of the more frustrating aspects that were on it here and there. I don't know how much of the frustrating bits are still on there, but... It's, it's going to be quite cool to be able to go back and do that. I'm going to be reliving a whole period of gaming that I went through that nobody was ever privy to. And it's going to be quite awesome being able to go back through and do it all again and let everybody see exactly what I used to do. And I, I'm quite looking forward to that. I think that's going to be quite a cool little experience for me. 
Um, I don't know about the rest of you. The rest of you might think it's absolutely terrible, but um, that is, is, is definitely a series that I would like to do. And so I'm kind of thinking I'll probably go on and do that after I've done the Alps series, because it does fit with the whole theme. It's not a hardcore type approach. It's more the go big or go home type approach for the Alps series, so it would fit quite well to follow on from that. Uh, I probably won't do it with Seasons. I will do it the way that I used to do it with the Harkenstead, so it will be without the Seasons that time round. And then I'll go and do another Seasons map after that. Uh, we're going to have time. Like, it's... I... Yes, it's slightly disappointing that we're not going to get FS21 coming out anytime soon, but it's also, in a way, it's a little bit more liberating because we're, we're free now to sort of expand on a number of extra series and, and do some more work and, and do some extra things. And I do think it's going to be quite cool that, that there are suddenly a lot more possibilities. There's suddenly a lot more options open to us, which I quite like. I, I, am, I am quite pleased that we've got these options being opened up to us. Right. This is definitely, definitely going to take a very, very long time. To do this very very long time I'm thinking that maybe we should seriously consider buying a large cultivator and allowing create fields with a large cultivator say a disc cultivator um, do it like that and then because that doesn't actually do the plowing properly once you go over it with a cultivator, it doesn't actually remove the needs plowing mark that comes up on it. So you still actually have to go over it with a plow. So we could do that. We could disc cultivate it and then go over it. By that time, it's, you know, the, it's created as a field. It's marked out as a field. And then we could set the hired help going with the plow with the tractor just working across the field doing the ploughing, because that will take care of the ploughing requirement on it. And, I mean, we're going to be doing grass to start with anyway, and a ploughing requirement doesn't make, it doesn't affect grass yield. So, that's something I think that I might do. Like, the, the amount of time that this is going to take, this, this, is, this is going to take a ridiculous amount of time to do otherwise, isn't it? I will do one more pass, and then we will finish up today's episode. But I think that, yes, all things considered, um, a cultivator might be the or you know, might might be in order. I think if we were to go and get a disc cultivator, there is a six meter disc cultivator that would work perfectly. That we could do that with, and we can disc plow this field, run through the disc plow. And then we can run through with, um, well, if we're doing that, we're allow create field. We should be able to follow on immediately with the plow following on afterwards. And it should remove the plowed need as well. Um, so we can do both jobs. So going over it, with, and that wouldn't be unrealistic either, right? Going over it first with some heavy discs to break up the surface of the soil before we go ripping it with the plow, that would actually, that's like a, a, a proper legitimate way of doing the work. That That's a, a genuine legitimate way of doing the work. And, and so I, I think we should seriously consider that. The other thing I think we should seriously consider is going into here and going to decoration and going through here. We've got walls and of course we have got fences over here. There's the short wooden fence right there. And I do think that we should seriously consider placing a fence line along the edge here to stop the tractors from doing anything stupid. Because we all know that tractors will do stupid things. I think I'm going to need to bring it round that way in order to make it work properly. It's going to have to go like that, and then if I do control E, oh, that's as high as I can bring the thing. I have to do it like that and sort of stagger it and build it into the um, uh, into the ground. Uh, I can bring it out like this, 
and put it up to there, but then I've got one stuck up out. Actually, the, both of those are stuck up out the ground. Even when I lower it into the ground, it, it's still, yeah. It's going to take a little bit to do that, but I think that we should seriously consider putting a fence line all the way up there just to be on the safe side. i got a feeling that otherwise it's going to end up going horribly wrong. But that's how much we've done in this episode. It's going to take me over a week to finish doing that. And you're not going to want me to spend over a week doing that. So I think the cultivator option is going to be what we're going to need. Um, but we'll look at that in our next episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. I'm going to take this one down to the bottom of the hill. We're done with this one for now. And then we can get the cultivator ready. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.